Well, blessed uh, Tuesday to you as we come with your words of encouragement. As I said yesterday, we are in Revelation 20. Probably the most interpreted, the most disagreed upon passage of the book of Revelation. And there are many theories that surround it. I mean, if we had not had the book of Revel, uh, not had chapter 20, everything would have probably flowed really easily between chapter 19 and what we'll see in chapters 21 and 22. But it says that there is a period of time, a millennium, a time of a thousand years where the church will reign on earth. Now, there was a lot of uh, traditional interpretation of that. A lot of people took the year 1000 as the end of the year, as the end of the world. In fact, we just recently, not as much as 20 years ago, had the second millennium, and that was considered a time where people fretted about the end of the world, whether the thousand years, the 2000 years had finished. I can tell you that these are not going to go by human timelines. But we had some very interesting times we lived in in 1999. And dare I say, if you want to read about the year 999, there is a lot of literature on it too. Very similar events and predictions about the end of the world. But what we have is a time where it seems that Satan and the serpent or the devil are bound um, by a chain and there is a limit to their power and that there is a time of success for the church. Now, we don't know if that is a thousand years that is to literally be fulfilled. Some argue that, that Israel has to have, in order to fulfill some Old Testament covenants, has to have a thousand years in order to be successful in this world. Um, I hold to the more idea that this was more of a broad description once again, another turn, another turn of the diamond of looking at the events and how to interpret them. And so we talked about the ancient serpent, the devil who was bound for a thousand years, threw into the pit and locked and sealed so that he would not deceive the nations no more until the thousand years were called. And after that, he must be let out and in good revelation fashion for a little while. While we have a solid timeline for those thousand years, we don't know why the devil was let out or how long the devil was let out. We just are given the term a little while. And that's the key thing that goes throughout the book of Revelation. We are endured for time, time, time and a half. Remember those, those phrases? There's an endurance for a little while. Some have argued a little while is a lifetime. And, and to some extent, you know, when we talk about our struggles that we go through, we have those struggles for a little while until we have eternity in heaven to look forward to. So there's all these different um, concepts and ideas just swirling around in these um, descriptions. And there are very orderly ways of understanding this. As I said earlier, we had the uh, millennium is the biggest concept and the biggest disagreement. Will there be a thousand years of reign of the church? Or is this a description of the both the success of the church, but also that there are parts of the world that will not achieve success until the very end and the final battle that we just saw in Revelation 19? A lot of mystery swirling around here. But we know that this is a time that the Lord has revealed for us, a time of a thousand years where God reigns in heaven and we believe will eventually reign on earth. When we sing the hymn of praise, one of the more interesting things to make me realize uh, more what I would call the amillennial, the Lutheran understanding of it, at least most traditional Lutherans do, hold to this as a summary of other parts of the book of Revelation. We celebrate the reign of Christ. We celebrate that there is things in heaven that are already established. And what we pray and what we are working towards is that the reign of heaven will also come down to earth and that that is what this period is about evangelism, growth in justice and programs to meet the needs of the world. And in fact, there was a famous book or magazine called The Christian Century when we were a little bit more optimistic about how we could reform and do the great reforms of this world. 
we probably are living in a more pessimistic time and we don't really look at these successes or we see a lot of the humanness and the failures of them. Regardless of how you view these timelines, the greatest thing to remember about these passages is that while Satan can be loosed and while Satan can be bound, the ultimate success and the ultimate consummation of the world is still off in the future. And we need to be about the business of not trying to figure out timelines, but just doing the work of the good news of Jesus Christ. And that, I think, is just uh, to keep in mind, even as we speculate about where Revelation chapter 20 fits into the whole scheme of things. Now, I promise tomorrow we won't talk a lot about timelines. We're going to get into the nitty gritty of what these images can mean for us as believers who are looking at them. Because that's one of the challenges of the book of Revelation. You can get lost in timelines, the disagreement about timelines, where all these things fit in, that you start missing the actual words that are supposed to challenge and inspire you. And so that's the thing that I just want to keep in mind as we read this. And to just be aware when you see Bible prophecy people, they'll have all their different understandings of Revelation 20. Like I said, the most disagreed upon chapter of the entire book of Revelation is this chapter. And really what happens, it's all about timeline. We need to look at the actual images and how they mean something or can mean something for us today. God bless you today. We trust that these continue to be words of encouragement. Take care. God bless. We'll see you next time.